tonight on 16 by 9. Attaboy. Hockey lovers promised a chance to make big bucks living their passion. Do what you love to do and have financial independence. So why are they so mad? He lies, he deceives. He's a lying scumbag. And then... The revival of an underground religion. Popping up in unexpected places. Isn't it like evil? Isn't it like bad? It's the opposite. And... When tiny Canadians have major emergencies. A lot of things happen in transport that could prove disastrous. These elite lifesavers spring into action. We're prepared to take care of the sickest of the sick. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Do what you love and the money will follow. That's the advice dozens of Canadians took to heart when they invested in a hockey training franchise. The salesman behind the pitch? one very charismatic businessman. But instead of a money-making career, many say they were duped and led right into financial ruin. Sean O'Shea has the story. Find something you are absolutely passionate about. In fact, so passionate that you will do it all day long for free. Create in that something so much value for people that they will line up to pay you for what you love to do. Make it a great day. Love hockey. Make it your business. In this puck-crazy country, it seems like the perfect way to make a living. Puckmasters is a BC-based franchise opportunity that offers anyone with that passion the chance to start a training center for young hockey players. Pete Fry has been the motivational dynamo behind Puckmasters since 1993. In his playing days, he was a goaltender. Now, he's a whirling dervish of can-do positivity. Pitcher, slow right away. Go there, fill the wrist roll. He even shared some of his exciting training techniques with us. You can probably tell just now the list that there that it's a unique way of teaching. Not a lot of people do that. So why are so many of Mr. Fry's business associates so mad at him? Terrible person. Two-faced. He lies, he deceives. He's a lying scumbag. This is Jack Van Dongen from Chilliwack, British Columbia. He and his wife bought into Puckmasters in April of 2009. Less than a year later, they were in desperation mode. What's your view of Pete Fry? He's not an honest person. He, he's, he takes money and doesn't deliver the product or the promises that uh, he took the money for. He really worked you over. Yes, he did. But it didn't start out that way. He comes across as a really nice guy with a positive personality and really wants you to be successful. Encouraged by Pete Fry's personality and the promise of a proven business plan, Jack bought in for $30,000. Puckmasters promises to provide expertise on how to build the training rink, supply equipment, and market the business to customers. You're signing with a franchise to get guidance on how to set up and, and how to operate the business. Jack had been a franchise owner before running a Mr. Lube and thought he'd be getting the same level of support from Puckmasters. One explained and directed you in every step of the way, and, uh, and Peter never, never did. Jack says he received virtually nothing he had been promised. Did anything he ever did bring you any business? No. You did it all yourself? We basically did everything ourselves. At the time, the Puckmasters model called for franchisees to secure a building that could accommodate a small training rink with synthetic ice. I paid him 50% for the rink to be put in my building. Six weeks later, I gave him another, the remaining 50% for the rink. Can I give you a good lesson? Yeah. But Jack says the $56,000 rink was missing key components, like the glass on one side and the goalie nets leaving him on the hook for thousands more. When it was finally finished, he was nearly ready to open. All he needed was this special treadmill to help kids work on their skating stride. Sticker price, nearly $100,000. The uh, agreement that we had in, in place was that I paid 50% down. The treadmill would be delivered in eight weeks. And um, after eight months, I still didn't have a treadmill. And that's when uh, the crap hit the fan. 
Jack no longer trusted Pete Fry's word, so he decided to call the treadmill manufacturer himself, who gave him a stunning piece of news. Peter has been telling him that I couldn't come up with the money. So he was lying? Yes, he was. Direct lie and a, a knowing lie, not, not a mistake like he likes to call it. Puckmasters does all kinds of advertising on YouTube, but there's one video that's not so flattering. Pete Fry's appearance on the CBC's Dragon's Den. Do you think we're idiots here? That we're gonna give you our dough at some crazy multiple? Why would I ever do that? Why would I take real money and give it to you to burn it like that? I was sick to my stomach after I saw him on the Dragon's Den, and I just thought, wow, I'm dead meat. After that, Jack severed ties with Puckmasters and has been trying to revive his frozen business by himself. So Pete Fry says you can make $100,000 to $150,000 a year, maybe in your first year. How much money did you actually make? Under 1000 a month, under 12000 in my first year. Uh, before I met Pete Fry, I was actually uh, financially secure and had a, a good paying job. I don't know if I'm in uh, bankruptcy mode yet, but I had uh, basically three rental properties and I'm now down to one. Pete Fry signed an agreement to pay back Jack's down payment on the treadmill in January 2010. But Jack says it's been more than a year since he's seen a dime. So he complained to the RCMP fraud division. It's easy to sign paper if you don't honor anything. Should Pete Fry be charged? He should be charged. He should be thrown away for life the way he's nailed me and, and everybody else out there. But the RCMP didn't lay criminal charges. They concluded Jack's case was a civil matter, partly because Pete Fry promised to pay the money back. Corporal Jamie Chung speaks for the Coquitlam RCMP. We understand people's frustration when they lose large amounts of money. And of course, everybody's going to be mad if they lose that much money. And uh, we would look at any information that is out there that has something to do with the case. But it only took 16 by 9 a few days to uncover more unhappy franchisees. So how hard did the RCMP actually look? Hopefully, nobody else gets hurt the way we've all been hurt by, by this man that, that has no conscience and no morals. Make it a great day. Next, 16 by 9's investigation reveals a trail of even more shocking complaints police never uncovered. James and Lori Klassen are getting ready to move from their home in Mission, British Columbia, but not by choice. We signed the bankruptcy papers on uh, July 27th. You're going to lose your house. Yeah. They've lost everything they own, in fact, and say it's all because of Puckmasters and Pete Fry. Would you have been in this position had you not had that first meeting with Pete Fry? No, we would not have. The meeting with Puckmasters and Pete Fry um, convinced us that we could make money at this. Encouraged by that belief and Pete Fry's optimism, the couple from Mission BC took out a big loan and in June 2007, bet their family's financial future on Puckmasters. $300,000 for you and your family where you live and your kind of employment, was that a lot of money? Yeah, that was everything we had plus more, yes. Despite the cost, James was convinced the money would immediately start rolling in. We were uh, we told that we'd be making money before we opened the doors. Did that happen? We never made money one month. So as months and months go by, you've got to find other ways to be able to pay the bills. Yeah, correct, yes. And you used your credit cards and you used your home equity loan and you ended up putting your house up as, yes. as collateral, essentially, for, for all of these rising debts. Mm -hmm. Finally, last fall, the last of the money ran out and the business went belly up. 
Is it fair to say it's been a very expensive and difficult learning experience? I've gone to university, I've got uh, several degrees and a master's degree, I should have known better. But I didn't pay as much for those as I paid for this one. <laughs> Did it cost you a bit of your dream? Uh, one, of the, one of the goals was where I could retire early from the uh, teaching world and do something different. And now I probably won't be able to retire until I'm 65. But that broken dream goes far beyond British Columbia, even Canada. 16 by 9 discovered franchises were sold in at least 34 locations across North America. Today, only nine are still operating under the Puckmasters name. Some severed ties with Puckmasters, others have closed. Canada's frozen sport has little in common with steamy South Florida, but that didn't stop Pete Fry from selling franchises here. Edie and Lee Bishop brought their passion for hockey from Philadelphia when they moved to Naples, Florida 14 years ago. When they found out about Puckmasters in 2009, they were eager to give it a try. I was very excited because we're hockey people, we loved hockey. Yeah. There was only one hitch. Lee had kidney cancer. I take a lot of medication. Uh, I get sick a lot, like out of nowhere. But after surgery to remove the cancerous kidney in spring of 2009, Lee was given a clean bill of health, so they decided to take a chance on one condition. I said to him, anything that I give you right now, you have to guarantee me that if things don't work out, you will give it back. He said, not a problem. I mean, his handshake was his word. So they trusted him. But only a few months later, in September, doctors gave Lee the bad news. It's everywhere in your body and uh, we can't open you back up. And you got six months to live. Now facing a life and death battle, building a new business was out of the question. But the bishops say Pete Fry refused to refund their money. It's nothing personal, it's business. I said, but where I come from, when we shake hands, that's a deal, you know? But to Lee and his family, it was very personal. Because I wanted to leave him financially secure. And I thought the business, the way Pete talked, you know, this is going to work and it's going to go smooth. To me now, he's just a shyster. He's not for what he can get. U.S. Medicare only covers 80% of Lee's treatments. They live on Lee's military pension, not nearly enough to make ends meet. We just don't have the money. We don't have the funds because all of our money is going to cancer, you know. Uh, we depleted our savings. The bishops used to enjoy riding motorcycles together. Now, Lee can only watch his wife ride into an uncertain future, thanks in part to Pete Fry. Next, 16 by 9 catches up with the man behind the broken dreams. told him that we'd be making money before we opened the doors. Did that happen? We never made money one month. James Klassen is losing his home. Jack Van Dongen says he's lost more than $100,000. Edie and Lee Bishop are fighting cancer and a mountain of debt. To me now, he's just a shyster. Just three of many Puckmasters franchisees who say Pete Fry ripped them off. So we wanted to give Pete Fry a chance to explain himself. He told us he'd be out of town, but when we showed up at his house, there he was. Then he got into his car and disappeared. So we tried reaching him again by phone. It's a great day. You've reached Pete Fry's personal voicemail. First, we got his voicemail. Then he wanted money. How much are you going to pay me to do the interview? You want me to pay you to do a TV interview about your franchise? Well, yeah. Then the excuses started. So we waited. Still no Pete Fry. Are you not going to go home tonight? Are you going to leave? You're going to leave your wife and your family here without you because you're afraid to come home and do an interview? After hours waiting at his house and more cajoling, he finally agreed to meet us at this hotel. He's here. And suddenly, after avoiding us all night. Pete Fry was our friend. What's your name? 
Kirk. Kirk Pete Fry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kirk. What's your response to the franchisees who say you sold them something that didn't come true? Well, there, there, there's two sides to every story. Number one, uh, number one is we're, we're not perfect. The biggest mistake that we made was we weren't selective enough in the franchisees. First, we asked him about James Clausen, who's losing his home. So was he at fault for the failure? Well, I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm not saying it's our fault. I'm just saying it didn't work out. And you know what? I like James. He's a nice guy. Would I sell him a franchise again? No. But you took I a lot of his money. You took his franchise We, we didn't take all of his you money. You took royalties? Okay? He bought things. Pete insists all the franchisees got the training they were supposed to get, but that some simply refused to follow the Puckmaster system. How many times will people accept responsibility and say that, no, it's my fault that my business didn't work? Now, James was not following our systems. He didn't, you know, he, and that, that's, maybe that's our fault for not saying, you're not following the systems, you're, 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 you're terminated. That's my, one of my weaknesses is that I'm, I'm too nice sometimes. Next, we asked about Jack Van Dongen's accusation that Pete pocketed the $46,000 he was given to buy a skating treadmill. Pete chalks that up to bad economic times. You know, a lot of businesses can go through tough times and stuff, and you have to be creative and get creative and Did you find a way to make it work for everyone. The whole economy blew up the last three years. How many, how many businesses went out of business? And finally, we asked about the bishops and their battle with cancer. Pete says he lost money after spending time with them and doesn't owe them a thing. We spent countless of hours putting this together, piecing this together with them, and, and it's fi finally when we pulled it off and we put it together, she pulled the pin. And uh, I was furious. Pete Fry says the franchise agreement never guaranteed a financial return. But what did he tell franchisees? Number one is I never would, never have said, you're going to make this amount of money no matter what. You never said that. Listen, I would, I would, I would say that. <laughs> okay, that's, that's going on there. The model wasn't working, the business was failing, but you kept selling franchises <laughs> to new business people. Let, let me stop you there. Who wanted, there, there to, who wanted to make money. No, no, there were some locations that, that were making money, okay? And... Uh, <laughs> Pete now says his biggest mistake was continuing to sell franchises when the original business model using synthetic ice wasn't working. Hey, you know what? Okay, I'll say it was a failure. Okay, you can, you can air that. You can put that on there, okay? I'm saying that we had some issues. We've dealt with them, right? We're still dealing with some, and we are switching over to using the real ice, using the, the two-thirds size ranks. Pete now admits many kids don't want to train on fake ice. He believes the new business model using real ice will be easier to sell and offer new sources of revenue. I made mistakes. I think we fixed the foundation in order to make it very successful long term, but time will tell. Pete claims revenues have jumped more than 300% at the real ice locations, but already there are questions about whether this really is a new Puckmasters. This is Sean Snyder. The Montreal native bought into the new real ice business model in February. So this is the uh, all-new Puckmasters training rink concept. But when Sean told us his story, it sounded like the same story we heard from other franchisees. Uh, what didn't he promise me? Oh, well, we're going to have you making money before you open the door. At all those failed franchises, Pete had an answer for that too. That was the old system. That was the synthetic ice, not the new system and Puckmasters is going through a transition. This is Sean's building, only it won't be a Puckmasters. Sean says all he ever got from his franchise fee was a thin stack of useless paper. Sales building manual, the all new Puckmasters training rink concept, and the Puckmasters franchise agreement. And all for the low, low price of $30,000 plus 5% GSC. Sean says Pete didn't live up to his promises, so he cut ties with Puckmasters in May. I was speaking to him, he got very angry. His exact words were, why are you being such a jerk? Sean says he contacted a lawyer, but believes Pete knows most of his former franchisees can't afford to sue him. He actually said uh, he was very smart and he's gotten away with a lot of things and uh, try all I want. It's a kick in the pants, doesn't feel nice. Probably the same feeling as being kicked in the pants, so. But Sean didn't lie down. He tracked down former franchisees 
created a website with their stories and put a warning on YouTube for future franchisees. To give people the opportunity to make a proper decision that I didn't get and all these other people didn't get. Sean says his experience shows Puckmasters hasn't changed and neither has Pete Fry. Dreamers, beware. I was trying to live my passion and my dreams, like he says on his website. If he goes to jail, if people get their money back, fantastic. Next, it's in the blood. Possession for us, it is gut. A revival of a religion.